Greetings, and welcome to this episode in the series of videos on LiDAR with ArcGIS Pro. This series is brought to you by AmericaView, in partnership with the College of Natural Resources and Environment at Virginia Tech, the Virginia Cooperative Extension, and GeoTED UAS. I'm Cherie Auckland, and I'll be your guide. In this chapter, we introduce you to the geoprocessing tools used for classification and discuss the decisions that must be made when classifying LiDAR points. We'll demonstrate some of these tools in the next chapter. Either open the project created in Chapter 19, or create a new local scene and add the San Luis Valley last dataset. Let's begin by going to Tools on the Analysis tab. In Toolboxes, the geoprocessing tools for classification of LiDAR points are listed under the 3D Analyst extension. Expand 3D Analyst Tools and Last Dataset folder. Multiple tools are found here, including more tools in the classification and conversion folders. ArcGIS Pro provides shortcut icons that will open many of these tools, and using the search bar to find them is also very effective. Let's close this. Make sure you have your last dataset selected and go to the classification tab on the last dataset layer toolbar. In the geoprocessing group, there are three different classification options. Reassign classification is used to change already existing classification codes and flags. With automated classification, you see five tools, classify ground, classify buildings, classify overlap, classify noise, and classify by height. And under feature proximity, there are two tools, 2D proximity and 3D proximity. Let's review each tool. Some of these will be demonstrated in the next chapter. Clicking on reassign classification, opens the Change Last Class Codes Geoprocessing tool. The processing extent is a very important decision to be made when using geoprocessing tools. Expanding Processing Extent, we see Processing Extent and Processing Boundary. If Processing Extent is left default, the change will apply to the entire dataset. There are several options here to limit the processing extent. Current Display Extent will allow changes only to those points displayed in the Map Viewer. Browse allows the extent to be limited to that of another GIS file, for example, a file that defines a specific study area within the extent of the point cloud. Union of Inputs and Intersection of Inputs will be discussed with the Feature Proximity tools. Let's choose as specified below. New Input fields here allow entry of specific coordinates that surround points to be changed, Please note that not all points within these coordinates will be changed, only those that are changing from the current class to another class. Let's go back to Default. Let's point to the Processing Boundary Information icon. Here, a polygon can be created to encase the points to be changed. Clicking on this pencil icon over here lists polygons as an option for the boundary, and selecting it opens a drawing toolbar. These will be demonstrated in the next chapter. Let's open the Environments tab. This tab just provides another extent window. Close the Change Last Class Codes tool. So as mentioned previously in other chapters, ground points should always be classified first. Go to the Automated Classification and choose Classify Ground. Some of these options are exactly the same as the Reassign Classification tool, Processing Extent, for example, and the Environments tab. Some additional decisions to be made when using this tool are the Ground Detection method, which has three options, Standard Classification, Conservative and Aggressive Classification, and the Information icon provides details about each of these methods. The main difference in these methods is related to slope. A greater slope may affect how ground points are differentiated from low vegetation. Which tool to use depends on the topography of the study area. The next choice for this tool is whether to reuse existing ground points. This option is typically chosen when using the aggressive classification method in which existing ground points are not reclassified. The DEM resolution option is used if the classification of the point cloud is solely for creating a digital elevation model. The unknown drop-down menu for DEM resolution is for unit designation. If classification of the point cloud will serve other purposes, such as identifying vegetation, don't use this DEM resolution option. Now let's close this and open Classify Buildings. Within this tool, the minimum rooftop height 
and minimum area of a building are designated. You can use the default values of 2 and 6 respectively or enter specific values. Using specific values can be very useful in an urban area with large and tall buildings. Be careful in residential areas as trees can be misinterpreted as buildings. The unit of measurement can also be changed. If reuse existing building classified points is not checked and building classified points are already present, those points could be reclassified as unassigned if they don't meet the parameters established under minimum rooftop height and minimum area. If some points are correctly classified as building, it is recommended that this box be checked so that those points are not reassigned and could assist in identifying other building points. Is photogrammetric data is only checked if the point cloud was derived from a photogrammetric technique. If the point cloud was a LiDAR acquisition, this box is not checked. Let's close Classify Last Building and open Classify Overlap. The Classify Last Overlap tool is only used for overlapping scans with differing scan angles. LiDAR data with larger scan angles may cause some irregular point distributions and larger than desirable margins of error. This can occur if the LiDAR tiles added to a last dataset don't come from the same acquisition or if problems developed during the flyover. For more information on this tool, see the help area here. Close Classify Last Overlap and open Classify Noise. Noise was introduced in Chapter 15, but as the tool shows in its information, noise is points with anomalous spatial characteristics in the dataset. Points classified as noise are not used in most analyses, so care must be taken when identifying points as noise. There are three options for the method of noise identification. Isolation, which is the default, relative height from ground, and absolute height. Recall from earlier chapters, there are two classification codes for noise, 7 low noise and 18 high noise. In many instances, the raw data provided to the customer already has some noise points identified. We saw noise class codes present in the San Luis Valley dataset. So which of these methods is appropriate? Isolation, the default, allows ArcGIS Pro to evaluate the dataset looking for the anomalies. Some parameters for this method can be changed. Let's expand isolation detection. The neighborhood point limit is already set at 10. This limit is the maximum number of points within the designated area or neighborhood width and height that can be classified as noise. If the data set has a much larger number of points within the neighborhood that qualify as noise, the validity of the data set should be questioned. The neighborhood width and height are already set at 8 meters. These values can be increased or decreased and the unit of measurement changed. For height detection, the minimum and maximum height for ground values are set. Those values may be difficult to determine if the area has substantial relief. So if a feature class is available for the ground, it can be added in the ground entry box. If the area of interest is absolutely flat ground, such as an agricultural field of soybeans in Iowa, the minimum and maximum heights could easily be established without a ground elevation feature class file. If the exact elevations of the region are not known, but it is known that certain values above and below ground should definitely be noise, for example, 10 meters below and 100 meters above, use the relative height from ground method. When using this tool, as with other classification tools, Already classified points can be included. Unlike other tools where not including them as the default, this tool includes them by default because the analyst is establishing the specific parameters for noise. The Assign Withheld Flag option is unchecked by default, which means the points are not withheld from any other dataset processing, so the points are still available if they are needed in other processing or if they are then identified as not really noise. An example of this would be a low point which has an elevation value of 100 meters below the lowest nearby ground point. A field evaluation of the area later determines that this was the first sign of a sinkhole. Thus, further evaluation of the initial LiDAR point cloud may be necessary and low noise points included. Output noise points is an optional setting. Use this if a new feature class shapefile of just the noise points is desired in addition to the classification. 
Which method or which optional settings should be used with these tools depends on familiarity with the region. The more familiar an analyst is with the region, the more optional parameters can be included or default values can be changed. Let's close Classify Noise and open Classify by Height. The Classify Last by Height tool allows classification of multiple classification codes at one time and only classifies unassigned points. This tool will be demonstrated in the next chapter. A ground source is required because the height values are height above ground. The default class codes in this tool are vegetation codes. These can be changed, for example, when classifying buildings in urban areas or classifying areas with little vegetation and mainly man-made structures. The height values can also be changed. Another reason familiarity with the study area is necessary is low vegetation soybeans, medium vegetation corn, and high vegetation oak trees, or is the low vegetation bushes, medium vegetation oak trees, and high vegetation redwoods. Be careful when changing the noise classification option from the default of none, as it will classify all unassigned points outside of the height classification parameters as noise. Let's close classify by height, and let's go to feature proximity, 2D proximity. These tools use feature classes to assist in classification of points. For example, a building's shape file could be used as the input feature class to help classify the points that are six building. This tool can also assign flags to classified points. You can use the plus sign by input feature class to add other feature classes to be used in assisting the classification. Perhaps in addition to a building file, there's a point shape file for city park trees. Using the buffer distance with a point shape file can help identify those points in a point cloud that are tree canopy. For this tool, processing extent is found in the environments tab. The extent can be limited within the feature class, or if the feature class is outside the boundaries of the last data set, the other options such as union of inputs, intersection of inputs, or current display can be used. And there may be differences between the coordinate system of the LiDAR data set and any feature class. So the geographic transformations option can be used to project the output coordinates on the fly. Now let's go and open 3D proximity. This tool is much more complicated than the 2D tool. It requires a 3D feature class. Instead of a buffer distance, it uses a search radius. Remember, 3D is X, Y, and Z. This tool will add a new field to the 3D feature class named count, or a different name could be designated. An optional output feature class can be created for those classified points and a field to add the class code assigned to those points. If no 3D feature class exists, this tool allows for creation of one. Clicking on the pencil icon at the end of the input 3D features provides a list of possible feature types to choose from. You can use the new 3D feature class to classify points. At the bottom of the geoprocessing window is an option not seen in any other tool, Enable Undo. This is the only tool which allows the geoprocessing operation to be undone. Settings in the Environments tab include Output Coordinate System, if creating an output feature class, Geographic Transformations, remember possible coordinate system differences, and the Processing Extent, which is the same as described in the other tools, except since this is 3D, there are Z-coordinate values as well. This concludes the introduction to geoprocessing tools for classifying points in a point cloud. In the next chapter, we'll demonstrate the Classify by Height tool, the Reassign Class tool, and the 3D Proximity tool.